We're vegging. Veg. All right. <laughs> Now, we're in upstate New York to meet Steve Spence and Jim Juzak, who build wind turbines. What I want to know is how sustainable it is to live off of a wind turbine. Right. I want to know uh, what kind of materials are necessary, too, for making a wind turbine, whether they're readily available in, like, the local hardware store. Awesome. Steve and Jim get almost all their power for free. In New York State, they can't always count on solar power, because it's often cloudy and days are short in winter, but there's lots of wind all year round. Jim's house is completely off the grid and made up almost entirely of recycled materials, scraps, and stuff that people didn't want or need. Jim's so good at recycling, he's written a book called The High Art and Subtle Science of Scrounging. An awesome house. I'm Chris. Ooh, welcome to our place. Yeah, thank This is you. quite a place. This is amazing. Yeah. The area here, it's 52 acres. Um, the main part where we are now was uh, a gravel mining operation. We didn't want to build the house on land that was suitable for farming because part of the philosophy here is that we need all the good farmland we can get. And by building on areas that are less suited for growing food for people and animals, uh, you're doing better service for the planet and people around you. It was very easy to build a house without a mortgage. This house being made of used materials, a lot of it was on a handshake, and I thank you for getting that stuff out of my yard. But we'd love to, to build a, a wind turbine today, if, if that's cool. Yeah. Um, but before we do, it'd be really great to see the house. Sure. Jim's house is constructed 80% out of recycled materials. It has a green roof, and it's heated with a masonry stove that he designed and built. We're going to find out about his electrical system. It's part solar, but mostly wind power. So this seems like a fairly complex uh, system here. It looks yeah. really complicated. And it's not. And it's not. Yeah. Um, if you can replace a battery in a car, you're about halfway to where you need to be to put your own off-grid electrical system in. We've got the electricity coming in from an underground wire through here and into a control box. The turbine is out there. There's a big old thick wire that goes in a tube underground into my house here. Batteries are in this box underneath here. What's, what's pretty cool is looking at this light right here and realizing that the electrons, you know, they're not being imported from Quebec yeah. or from Utah, that they're being made or the right three here. nuclear power plants in Oswego. Right. So where did you guys put your turbine? How did you come up with that plan? It had to be located so that it couldn't fall on a building or on the road. Can we see? Sure. Jim's turbine spins any time the wind blows more than seven miles an hour. We want to build one from scratch and see how it all works. The whole theory behind this is you have to get magnets passing through copper coils. We suspend the disc, which consists of nothing but coils of wire, and we put two plates that have neodymium or rare earth magnets on them. The magnets are in opposing forces. In other words, there's a north pole facing the coil and a south pole facing the coil. And as I said before, if you wave a magnet past any conductor, it causes electrons to move. You take a rectifying diode pack, it lets the electrons flow one way. And what you get out of the top two screws is direct current, the current that could charge a battery. Why don't we get them started on winding some coils? Sure. And you put it in here, mm -hmm. and you start it on there. So copper one, coils are an essential two, component of any wind four, turbine construction five, because current is generated in response to magnets of opposite poles moving past the copper coils, changing their magnetic fields and creating a current. Hey, perfect, perfect. So you're out. When we take the coil winder off of it, once the coils are done, they get placed in this mold. That's one phase. And then you would overlap the next one. That way, every each third coil is connected in series to each other. Once all the coils are in place, we fill this with the rosin, and we just make sure everything's set properly, and then we wait overnight and wait for that rosin to harden up. So why don't we uh, complete assembly on this, if you can give me a hand doing that. Sure. 
I look around at the world around me. I look at the fact that oil is $82 a barrel last week and understand that that's going to be dumped on the American public for cost of electricity and heating. I mean, you have people that are afraid to plug things into an outlet in houses, let alone work with power systems. And I'm trying to take the fear and turn it into something productive. So really, it's, it's, it's happening here. It, yes. What's really happening is you made your own AC alternator. And you're letting the wind spin the AC alternator. Which then will power our really cheap fan that we bought. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, here, here we go. go. Oh, nice. All right, good work, Nobu. Faster. Is it spinning? Yeah, it is. Yeehaw. It's kind of the first time I've ever really understood the generation of electricity. <laughs> In a way, so I appreciate that. Wave the magnets past the wires. Yeah, that's, that, all that's it is. literally it. Well, thanks so much for sure taking the time. It's been today. fun to do this with you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. really thanks great to meet you guys. Us. We got to take off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good seeing you. Now that we know how wind power is harnessed, we're back on the road. But unfortunately.